Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. Thank you, it's a pleasure. A fascinating panel talking about AI and how this industry is beginning to adopt AI into the, into the industry. Where are we at with that and what would you say the position is now? Mm -hmm. So uh, the AI for alternative investment, it's really the journey of adoption is speeded up last 18 months with the development of generative AI and everything happening around it. It existed in the last five, six years, a lot of success cases, but really it's speeded up. And I see more and more fund managers in this conference versus the conference I came last year now talking about AI in a practical way, better understanding, and a lot of them have started adopting use cases and having some experience right now to talk about. Where would you say the key areas it has most potential? Mm -hmm. So in terms of the potential that we see, there's generally two categories. There's operational efficiency, which is about doing things faster, faster due diligence, faster market trend analysis, faster in LPGP like reporting and others. And there's like finding good opportunities in the market. These are two general cap categories. The first one is more accessible, faster to adopt. It's easier to build that culture internally so you can talk to your analysts associates. You can do, use AI now to do all the document analysis, to find the source of information, to prepare your templated document. And I see a lot of progress happening already. But the other area is perhaps more exciting and challenging is where you see potential and spotting perhaps even new founders can be found like this. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. So AI is here to stay. AI is going to just change and it's going to be very rapid, very quick. Not only in the space of generative AI, we have GPT-40 and other building blocks like operating systems rapidly growing, but also predictive AI. It's going to be huge improvements. And it's a platform approach that we see that is successful in this space. The platform approach is sets the fund ready to start small, start quick, make the gains, but look at AI as a journey, as a platform that one after the other, these use cases are going to add to that platform in a uniform way of all the use cases and all the development happening from that platform. And it's easier to adopt internally, culturally for all the end users, which are analysts, associates and investors. You talk there about adoption. What are you seeing in terms of the teams needed to, to really embrace this? Are we seeing people trying to retrofit this or are they actually looking for you know, properly trained AI experts to come into businesses right from the start and make this integral? Mm -hmm. Definitely the second one. What we see is that even the solutions that is provided to the funds, like even the work that AIX do, like the same functions provided to each fund, you see each of them embrace it in a different way, in a unique way, unique use cases from expert call summarization to Excel population to writing the investment memos to these, everyone has its own unique way of tailoring that. That's why it's always important. And then I, we talk to fund managers to say, have this mindset of finding what is the value of AI for you and what is your tailored use case of that and work with your champions internally, being like C-level who are, it's a top-down process, as well as the end users, analysts and associates to define it and own it for your fund. There is this idea that AI is going to come in and perhaps predict the future of the stock market and, and, and basically remove the need for human experts. What's your view on that and how will human expertise fit in and tailor together with AI to, to come out with the best outcomes? That's a, that's a very good question. Uh, and it's taking a long vision on AI and it's a, it's a, a lot of uh, uncertainty around it, what, where it's going to go. I have seen funds who are super ambitious. They want to be AI native. The fund, AI native funds who have worked with us, and there are some of them are huge funds, like billion dollar. And there are some mega funds who have assigned a subset of their fund to be AI driven only. And the way they think about it is end-to-end -end AI. Everything with AI, be not only in the stock market and public investment, but also in private space. That's a huge bet, right? But I think they are in the minority. We will see how it rolls out. Majority of the funds are going into an augmented way that you use AI as, a, as an opinion that sits beside the other investors and decides if you should invest and go forward the deal or not, right? That's already a lot, of, a lot of trust in a machine to sit in a committee of five, six people, investors, and have a vote. And then there's like a lot of uh, other funds who just use AI as an operational efficiency for now and see where it goes. But the idea of AI being to predict a stock market, good investments for alternative investment and others, that's definitely something that's getting more and more mature. Like we are getting there in terms of recommendation systems in out of the space of investment and now getting adopted for investments. What are the key challenges 
with all of that because people are quite fearful of, of putting too much responsibility into the unknown. So the main challenges we see for this, like we have this ongoing survey study, which is working with fund managers and see exactly this question. Like one of the questions is, what is the challenge for AI adoption for you? And out of like 300 plus fund managers we have talked to, it used to be earlier that they were so worried about hallucination and performance of AI. That is definitely fixed with the rapid impro improvement of this uh, in, uh, uh, technology. Then there was a lot of concern about security and I don't want to give my data. In the same way that people were concerned about cloud like 10 years ago, that's ramped down definitely. What you see right now a lot of time shows up and it shows the maturity of the experiences getting there quickly in this community is cultural. Like I bring a solution to my fund, people don't adopt it. How can I, how can I uh, ensure an organizational adoption of a solution? And how can I make it my way, tailored way? So, and I'm sure the community is going to learn it. We are, we are doing our own uh, support and training and education, but it's a collective learning of the community, and there will be, it will be basically an address soon, like with the more experience gathering in the community. It will become intrinsic rather than a layer over the top of anything. Exactly. Yeah. With all of that in mind, what do you say to people who say, well, at the, at the heart of this business, there's 5,000 people who've gathered here in Berlin that, that want to meet each other, that there's a human relationship involved in investment? Yeah, you, you, that's a very good point. Uh, the idea of machines trading against each other, especially in the space of alternative investment, is a little, uh, a little tricky because human relationship is something that needs to happen in this business. So if you want to take a longer vision on what AI does, I think it will gonna empower the insights, insight extraction, finding their risks and upsides and make the decisions faster. But at the end, it's humans that should sit down together and build that relationship and make a deal, right? So the AI is gonna just make more free time for everyone with better insights so everything moves faster and there's less illiquidity in this market, which means in the theory of economies 101, more perfect market, more efficiency in the economy. I think there'll be a few people breathing a sigh of relief. We'll end it there, Mohammed. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me.